Playing Major League Professional Baseball is a heartfelt dream for millions of young Americans. Performing in front of massive crowds on a nationwide stage brings a thrill of its own. It was Steve Yard's lifelong ambition. I always figured when I got older that if you do something you enjoy, you're going to do it well, eventually you make a living at it. And that, that was my outlook on it. Steve dedicated himself to his goal and made every effort to make it to the top. Playing with the Dodgers here at L.A.'s Dodger Stadium is a chance few players get to realize. Just making it to the Dodgers farm system is an achievement in itself. For Steve Yard, he was already there. His next step, Dodgers Stadium. As close as he was to filling his spot in the Dodgers ball club, disaster struck. I got injured in spring training and got released, and then that totally depressed me because what do I do now? I mean, that's I didn't have a second game plan. My, my number one game plan and all I saw was baseball. Steve's dreams were shattered. Professionally, there was just no alternative. His only other interest was in dance. Within a few months, a friend turned Steve onto high-energy jazz dancing. It was very physical, and it was the height of, of music and, and moving with music. It, it was the ultimate to me. And my desire for baseball just kind of faded away in the, to the past. I had an offer to go out and play with the St. Louis Cardinal organization, and after I did my first job in, in show business, I uh, never considered it again. Moving to the music, the feel, the emotions, the energy levels, the dynamics of dance were just very, very enjoyable to the body. Steve's career was booming. He was working with some of the top performers in the business. I worked the major shows, the, the major TV specials. Eastern religions and metaphysics captured Steve's curiosity. He was trying to accomplish his goals through his new spiritual journey. And his long, successful trek from his early baseball career led him into heavy drug use and alcohol addiction. My living was made with my body, and I couldn't afford to destroy my livelihood. Even the fast action of the Vegas Strip didn't satisfy Steve. Relationships were impermanent. Nothing seemed to last. And all the success that a Hollywood career had to offer just wasn't enough. Steve was making his mark here in Hollywood. He was working with Sammy Davis Jr., Jack Lemmon, Wayne Newton, and many other top-name entertainers. His choreography skills were in demand, and they were leaving him all the way to a teaching position at the University of Stockholm in Sweden. While in Sweden, Steve found his search for spiritual fulfillment at a critical turning point. Living had very little meaning anymore, and a new friend offered Steve an alternative. He just went for the heart. He started telling me about Jesus, and I was ready, able, and willing. It, it was, uh, I was just ready. It was time. When talking to him and just being around him, the peace he had brought peace to me, which I had never known because I was always striving for, for something to be good at what I do or, or, or something else or a new career. And just that peace that passes understanding. So the Lord immediately delivered you from pot and alcohol. Yeah, overnight. From the very next day, I, I didn't, uh, didn't smoke or drink or swear. It was those things the uh, Lord removed instantly. But he didn't eliminate the entertainment industry from your life. For nine months after I got saved, I didn't dance. I, I went to the gym, I worked out, and I, I read and, and I prayed, but I, I didn't know what to do with dance. In 1978, God started reshaping Steve's talents. Along with his new wife, Marlene, Steve worked through his professional and personal struggles. God has led them both into a joint musical, acting, and dancing career, which is fulfilling their deepest professional and spiritual goals. As we minister the word in, in music, song, drama, and dance, we pray up and we ask God to bless that, bring his anointing onto it. That's what sets the captives free. They shared that they would like to go nationwide. They have shared that they would like to get into these larger theaters, and they believe that God has opened up brand new doors in order to do such. We're performing for the Lord Jesus Christ, for in the world you perform for self, uh, for the feel of it, for the fame of it, for the fortune of it, uh, because uh, that's the God in the world is self. Now we're to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ through all avenues of the performing arts that Jesus Christ will draw men unto himself through, that, through the vehicle surrendered in the arts. Ultimately, dance, music, drama were all created and are all initiated by God for God's purposes. It's a gospel evangelistic tool to reach the lost. He wants everybody to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
and he can reach anybody. He reached me, and I was running, running wild in the world, running here and there and everywhere, and not being fulfilled, not having, just being empty. As much as, as it, it looked on the outside to be somewhat successful, there was no success if you don't have that inner peace. You're not searching anymore, are you, Steve Yard? No, not at all. I found it. I was lost, now I'm found. From Los Gatos, California, for the 700 Club, I'm Gwen Resick-Runnick.